Hey, what's up everybody, Osama here. In today's video, we're going to learn how can we create a digital check-in or ticketing system using Go High Level. So you can see on my screen here that I have a case study for a restaurant and we're trying to do a free dessert campaign. And the idea is that we have some database of customers for this restaurant in our Go High Level sub account. And we wanna target them by sending an email campaign where it will send or generate a dynamic QR ticket for everybody and then show this to the staff. And once the staff scans it, they should be able to see if this person is eligible or if they're not already redeemed it. So if that's good, they're gonna scan it and then this offer will be redeemed by the customer and we will be getting more visits using this campaign. So let's talk about the structure on how we can achieve this first and then we'll dive into the setup. So I have created a visual representation for a step-by-step -step process so we can explain this procedure better. The first thing we're gonna do is create a check-in form because when the staff member scans that ticket, it will go to a form where the customer's information will be pre-filled and then they have to click on submit or check in and then we will know if they are able to redeem it or not. That is what we'll do first. So let's head over to our sub account here and then I'm gonna head over to sites and then under forms, we're gonna go to builder. And then I'm going to click on add form and then let's choose a template to save ourselves some time. So go ahead already has some awesome templates here that we can choose. I'm just going to scroll down here and then try to find something related to a restaurant. So if we scroll down here, we can see restaurant and bar. So let's select that. And then from here, we can find a layout that works best for us. So as we are doing a free dessert campaign, I think this is the most relevant one. So I'll just select this one and then click on continue. So within a few seconds, we have our form created. Now I'm going to name it free dessert campaign demo. Let's do that. And then I'm going to change the image here. So we're going to head over to options here or styles, then scroll down to where it says colors and background. And here you can see the background file. I'm going to just keep that as it is. And we're going to delete this one and I will upload this image right here. So within a few seconds, we can see our header image here it looks pretty cool and then if i scroll down here there's some information that we do not need so we're going to need the full name that's fine phone and email are fine as well and then i'm going to delete out the other stuff so let's get rid of these and let's just keep this and we're going to rename this to check in once this is done we're going to do an additional step here which i'll explain to you in detail along the way so i'm going to click here to add an element and then i'm going to create a custom field which we can create as a single line that's fine and we will call it redeem status and we can group this under the contact that's okay and then just hit save now if i search redeem here we should be able to see the field so i'm just going to drag this here and click on that and it will bring up this pop-up and now i'm going to hide this field and i'll talk about why we're doing this so the idea is that whenever a staff member scans the ticket or a qr code we want to be able to pass on information whether this qr or the offer or the ticket was already used right so we'll be secretly passing the redeem status the customer will not see it but once the staff member scans it and they try to check in it will automatically disqualify the lead or say something like this is already redeemed so in order to do that we need to secretly pass this information in the back end and i'll show you exactly how to do that so that is why we're hiding this field for now and now the next step is to create a url if i go back to our diagram here you can see here that now we have a generated link with query parameters so if we head back here i'm just going to hit on save first so our form is saved and then we're going to click on integrate and then I'll copy the form link. So if I open this as is right now, we can see the form, cool. Now, the next step is we need to pre-fill this information along with the secret redeem status. So how do we do that? Now, for each field that exists in Go High Level, there's always a query key, which is mentioned here. So if you wanna see any field here, you can click on that and it will tell you the query key. So query key is where you can pass information in the URL. Like you might've seen some URLs that have a question mark after the domain and then they're passing information, usually like UTM parameters, right? So this works the same way. This is a query key. So if we grab the query key and build a URL structure, we can actually pass all that information to pre-fill the form so the customer or the staff member do not have to fill this out. And we have to also make sure that the information is consistent because if that customer already exists in Go High Level, we wanna make sure that their exact information is copied or pre-filled into the form so in order to do that let's copy these query keys for each of these custom fields here so to do that the first thing I'm gonna do is copy the form link so we'll paste this here 
I'm just going to use this for pacing purposes. Now I'll put in a question mark here and then this will start our URL structure. Now if we go back here, the first information we will be passing on is the name of the customer. So the query key here is full underscore name. So let's copy that and put it here and then we'll put in equals to contact dot name this is the system field inside of go high level and then to pass the next variable we have to put an and symbol here and then go to the phone number here and for this one the query key is phone of course so let's put that and then here we'll put contact dot phone and then we put another and symbol go back here pick the email so we'll put email equals to contact dot email and then the very last one we're going to put another and symbol and click on redeem status. The query key is redeem underscore status here. So let's copy that and then put equals to, and then to find the key for this, we'll head back here again. So this was the query key, but if we need to find out the unique key, we'll head over to advanced settings and then we can see the unique key here. So just make sure that you copy this and put those in braces. I've already done that in the background. So I'll just paste that here. Now this is the exact URL that we have in place. And this is exactly what we needed to complete step number two here. Now, if you open this link, you will see that the information will be pre-filled. Of course, it says contact.name. It says the exact custom field here. Of course, that will change once we send it to an actual customer. Now, when you open this, you will see that the information is pre-filled here. Now, of course, it doesn't say my name or phone or email or anything like that. That is because I have not sent it to myself and then opened it. So we'll dive into that. But for now, our goal is to shorten this URL and also enable tracking. And we're not going to use Bitly for that. We're actually going to use trigger links. Now, if you're not familiar with trigger links, it's a way of creating a link that packages your existing link and then you can track it with any kind of workflow or automation side of go high level so we'll go to links here under marketing and trigger links and this will also provide us a benefit of shortening the link that we've already created so i'll click on add link here and then we can call it free dessert campaign and then i'll paste the exact url with the query parameters as is here and then hit on save. Once this is done, we have our step three completed, which was to create a trigger link for better tracking. And then we've also shortened the link, which we'll see in a little bit. Now, the next or the fourth step is to send the email with the dynamic QR code. Now, at this point, you might have a question that if we're sending the same email template or campaign to everybody, how can we have a different QR ticket for everybody? So in order to do that, we're going to use a service called API qrserver.com this is a free service that you can use now we're going to plug in our trigger link into this and then it will create a dynamic qr for every single person receiving the email so let's head back to our go with account here and then i'm going to head over to marketing and under email and templates i've already created a template here and i'll show you exactly how can you achieve this as well so let's open this now you can see here that i've used the design editor for go high level so i've put in a simple text here we have the same image that we used with the form share this qr coupon with our staff to redeem and then we have a qr here so this will be dynamic now i'm going to delete this and then we'll do this from scratch so all this information is pretty basic you can add it to any kind of email template the most important part is the qr so let's dive into that now i'm going to pick the image element here and then drag it here i'm going to click on this image here and then we'll modify the link to address so copy the same exact url here because this is the free service that i was talking about which is the api.qrserver.com i'll put this in the description as well now if i scroll towards the right where it says data is equal to link here this is the part that you will change so we're going to get rid of link here and this is where we'll put the trigger link now you cannot get the trigger link right here but you can click on this field let's say and i'm going to scroll down and find trigger links and from here you can see we have a free dessert campaign now this is how the trigger link will look like right so all we have to do is just cut it or copy it and then i will paste that here so once this is pasted our url is complete if the image appears to be broken do not worry about it because once we test it or send it to ourselves it should be working because right now we have a two-step link structure the first thing we did was we generated a form link we added the query parameters and in order to package it to shorten it and to do better tracking we put it into a trigger link and now we have put the trigger link here to create a dynamic qr code so in those three steps we've actually created a dynamic ticketing system that we can now use so for now i'm just going to hit save here and now i'm going to test this email template so we can see if it actually works right so let's go back here and i'm going to head over to contacts and send an email to myself so i want to send it as an actual person you can of course test it from the email template so let's test this email template here if 
I open it, you'll see that the image is actually working here because it was appearing broken inside of the email template. So you don't have to worry about it as long as you test it and verify that it's actually working. So let me first scan this from my phone here. So I'll just quickly scan it and then just make sure everything is working fine. So it's just going to take a couple of seconds. And now you can see here that the information is pre-filled. And I'll just show you on the desktop as well by going to the link that is encompassed inside the QR code. So if we open this link here, you can see that the information is already pre-filled now, right? There's one information that is not appearing, of course, which is the redeem status, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but all the other information is pre-filled. So technically, anybody who receives this ticket, all they have to do is head over to the restaurant, order something, and in order to get the free dessert, they will show this ticket to the staff or the waiter, and then they will scan it from their phone, and then all the information will be pre-filled, and the staff will click on check-in. And then the next process, that how do we make sure that nobody redeems this twice? So let's get into that. Now that we have the form completed, we have generated the dynamic QR code, and we know that how the customers will be operating it. So now we'll head back to our sub account here and then create some automations, which will take care of the redeem thing and also make sure that we're tracking each check-in. So let's head over to automations and then I've already created a folder called restaurant. So I'll just open that and then we will create our first workflow. And I will name this one check in and the trigger will be form submitted here because we want to track the form that is being submitted. So let's apply a filter here, select the form and we have free dessert campaign demo. That is the form we want to target. So once this is filled, what do we want to do? So the first thing we should do always is to add a tag so we can have separation later on. So we can say something like free dessert checked in and we'll add a tag here and save that and then I will also update a contact field here because now we want to make sure if there's a successful check in the redeem status is updated so later on they cannot get into redeeming that ticket again and we'll get into how do we stop that from happening but firstly we're going to turn this to true so this will be updated as well and then for the third step you can actually collect reviews by sending a review request from here boosting your reputation so you can do sms or email and hit or save action and then of course you can add some more things like email or sms or even if you want to send all of this information to a google sheet you can actually make use of these premium actions here so let's say you want to keep track of every single person that has checked in their name their email when they came in so you can use this step to track all of that so this is just an idea of course there's much more stuff that you can add based on your use case but i'm just throwing ideas here that what is exactly possible using this thing so i'm just going to click on cross here for now we'll just keep the tag the content field update and review request here and then we're just going to make sure that we click on publish here and then hit on save. Let's say a customer came to the restaurant. They showed the ticket to the staff. The staff scanned it. It opened up a form like this. The staff clicked on check in and this will make sure that the form is submitted. Now, once this form is submitted, this automation will kick off. It will add a tag which says checked in, which means they have availed the offer. It will turn the redeem status to true, which we will use later on. And then it will send them a review request. Now we have the first part covered. Now we need to establish a system where we can disqualify the lead, where the redeem status is true and we want to restrict them and we want to make sure that the form is not submitted and we want to disqualify. So how do we do that now? So let's head back to sites again and then I'm going to head over to the form that we created initially. So once it opens up, we're going to add conditional logic here to disqualify the leads who have already redeemed this QR or ticket. So we'll head over to conditional logic. This is the icon for that. So if we click on that, we have a few options here. So the number one thing I'm going to do is disqualify the lead here. So this gives us an option to choose a field or a custom field that is present in our form. And that is why we have the redeem status there. And I've hidden it on purpose because if we do not add it inside the form, we cannot put this under this criteria. So we have hit it from the normal users, which is fine, but we're still able to pick it here, which is exactly what we wanted to disqualify the lead. So if the redeem status is equal to true, which we are setting in a workflow once there is a successful check in, then the lead should be disqualified. And then we can show a custom message, which can be you have already redeemed this ticket. Thank you for your visit. So you can change this wording, of course, but the idea is to disqualify the lead. So even if the staff member presses on check in, it will disqualify the lead, it will not kick off another automation, or it will not let them in. So we'll put this here and we'll hit on save here. Once it is added, you can see the criteria here. Now if we have this logic added here, now I'm just going to save this, I'm going to head back to the email. And let's say that we're trying to scan the same QR code twice. 
which we have already redeemed. That is the key because we have a workflow in place where we update the redeem status to true if the customer has checked in and that gets passed in the URL. So only then we will be restricting the customer to use it again. So let's go here. We already checked in before. So I'm just going to check in again and this is what the staff will do. And now it should say you've already redeemed this ticket. Thank you for your visit. So it will not actually count it as a form submitted. And we can make sure of that because if we head over to automations here and we open the workflow we created and head over to execution logs, we should see only one entry for this. So you can see that this was the first entry that happened. We tried it for the first time. And then after that, it did not create another entry or another execution for the same user. And if we have to double check, we can actually head over to sites here and then under forms and submissions. And if we have our form selected here, you can see we have two submissions here. So the first one was this one where we had the redeem status as empty. And this one actually went through. And if I scroll towards the right, you can see it was not disqualified. So it was allowed and it ran through the workflow. The customer was able to check in and then we can give them a free dessert. But for the second time, you can see here that it disqualified the customer. It did not add them to the workflow. So this means that we are successfully restricting somebody from using or redeeming that coupon again. So this actually tells you that we are successfully able to restrict people from using or redeeming this coupon code again. So this is only one time use. And this is how you can make sure of that by using the conditional logic inside the forms and by using the custom field that we created, which is called redeemed. All right. So that was all about this video. Again, I just showed you the tip of the iceberg and I showed you the structure and how you can leverage this kind of structure and go high level. But of course, you can make it more extensive and more successful. And this is not just limited to restaurants. You can also replicate it for events or workshops or, or any other kind of campaign. So I hope this video provided some value and gave you some more ideas to explore this. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to see them in the comments below. That's it for today. This is Osama signing off. I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.